AEW is working on signing the elite to new long-term contracts. Taya Valkyrie likely headed to AEW or WWE. John Cena visits Cody Rhodes' Nightmare Factory Training Center. And WWE registers with Indiana Gaming Commission. Hey there, everyone. It's Denise Salcedo. Welcome back to another episode of The Latest. Let's get right into some news coming out of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. AEW is working on signing the Elite, which includes Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, to new long-term contracts before they hit free agency. Dave Meltzer reported the news in this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter. All three men are founding members of AEW and also hold executive vice president roles. In January, Meltzer said that AEW was interested in re-signing Matt and Nick Jackson to new deals, but that process had yet to begin. At the AEW Revolution Media Scrum, Tony Khan was asked about Kenny Omega, and this is what he had to say. Kenny Omega is one of the best wrestlers in AEW history. He's one of the most decorated wrestlers. To have somebody who's been World Trio Champion and had a great match defending that title tonight, World Tag Team Champion, and the World Champion. He's done everything you can do as a World Champion in this company and also the IWGP US Champion. This year alone, he's had some of the best matches in the world. I thought it was an excellent match on the pay-per-view tonight. He started the year with a great match in Tokyo versus Will Ospreay at Wrestle Kingdom, and Kenny Omega can do anything he sets his mind to. He's one of the best stars in the world, and I hope he's here for a very long time. And WWE's John Cena paid a visit to Cody Rhodes and QT Marshall's Nightmare Factory training facility as a guest speaker to the school's trainees. The Nightmare Factory's Twitter account posted a photo of John Cena with members of the school's ninth training camp, noting that Cena spoke to the class ahead of their showcase event coming up on March 23rd, and thanking Cena, referring to him as the goat in emoji form. Both John Cena and Cody Rhodes had a brief interaction on this week's WWE Raw show in Boston, where Cena returned to the company to set up his WrestleMania 39 match against Austin Theory for the United States Championship. And Taya Valkyrie could soon be joining either AEW or WWE. Dave Meltzer reported in the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that Taya Valkyrie is likely going to either AEW or WWE. Whichever promotion her next destination is, it's supposed to be made clear within a short period of time. Meltzer wrote that Taya Valkyrie has finished up with Impact Wrestling and also isn't committed to MLW for a long time. The Death Dolls are defending their knockouts tag team titles against the Coven on the episode of Impact Wrestling that airs next Thursday. Valkyrie currently holds the MLW Women's Featherweight Championship. She's defending the title against Daomi Exo at MLW's War Chamber tapings in New York City on Thursday, April 6th. Valkyrie formerly wrestled for WWE, going by the name Frankie Monet in NXT. She signed with WWE in February 2021, but was released that November. TBS champion Jade Cargill has challenged a Canadian wrestler to step up for her when AEW comes to Winnipeg for Dynamite and Rampage next week. Of course, as most of you know, Taya Valkyrie is from Canada. And for the first time in nearly a year, WWE 24 is returning with a new episode. It was announced today that a new WWE 24 documentary will premiere on the Peacock and WWE Network on Monday, March 27th. The documentary will focus on WrestleMania 38 and the behind the scenes of the event. In addition to Colorado and Michigan, WWE's efforts to legalize gambling on its predetermined matches also include the state of Indiana. A report from CNBC released yesterday stated the company has already met with regulators in Colorado and Michigan regarding wagering on high-profile WWE matches. On Thursday, the outlet updated its report to confirm that WWE has already registered with the Indiana Gaming Commission for such purposes as well. However, the Colorado Division of Gaming stated to CNBC that it is currently not considering legalized wagering on WWE matches. The organization also noted the state has a statute that prohibits gambling on predetermined contests such as award shows. If the Michigan Gaming Control Board approves legalized wagering on WWE matches, that information would be made public through the organization's sports wagering catalog. WWE has 
hired the accounting firm Ernest & Young for the purposes of securing match results and demonstrating to regulators that gambling on predetermined contests can be done safely. The firm already works to secure results for predetermined contests such as the Academy Awards. WWE executives have reportedly proposed that in order to allow for legalized wagering, match results would be locked in months ahead of time and prevented from leaking to the public. The wrestlers involved would not be informed of matches results until shortly before it takes place. Alrighty, there was quite a bit to unpack there for today. As always, let us know your thoughts on these stories in the comment section below. If you guys would like to chat more about this with me, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok at underscore Denise Salcedo. And last but not least, if you want to catch the latest episode of Speak Now Pro Wrestling where I discuss AEW Dynamite, feel free to click on the screen.